Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and I read a lot of books. Got a slightly different angle today because it's very dark outside. It was what, really sunny this morning. The weather just suddenly changed and it's gotten really dark. And so I was just trying to find somewhere that might have a bit of better lighting. But where's my light? Where's my light? Does that make a difference? I have no clue. Uh, today i have started a new series by TJ Green. This is a Spirit of the Fallen. A paranormal mystery which is in the world of Whitehaven witches. So there's common characters and things but it's also introducing new people and it's going off onto a slightly different story. Let me just get up that little blurb for you. This one I read on the uh, Kindle app for my phone. About this book, there we go. An ancient tomb promises untold treasures but delivers something far more dangerous. Shadow, a deadly fey warrior with little patience for mortals, ends up stranded in Whitehaven after her ride with the wild hunt ends in disaster. Gabe is one of seven Nephilim, newly arrived from the spirit world where they have been trapped for millennia. He has a violent history that haunts him, and a father he wants answers from, if he ever finds him. They all have skills that mere mortals don't. Superior strength, agility, speed, and dubious moles that give them flexibility in their work. Harlan Beckett, a collector for the Orphic Guild, an organisation that searches for magical and occult goods for a high price, is always looking for hunters, and their mysterious founder has more than a passing interest in the Nephilim. Harlan's client discovered a tomb that promises untold treasures. The only problem, he can't get past the magic that seals it. Q, Shadow, Gabe and the team. The trouble is, there's more in the tomb than they expected, and soon the hunters become the hunted. So yeah, this wasn't what, what I thought it was going to be at all, but I really enjoyed it. When I saw that it was Whitehaven Hunters, I thought it was going under the Paranormal Hunters, which were introduced during the um, Whitehaven Witches series, which is a group of mortals who have... A, uh, kind of like a paranormal kit where they can see ghosts and things. Yeah, I thought it was going down that route. I was completely wrong. Completely wrong. The Whitehaven Hunters refers to the Orphic Guild and the collection and the search for these magical and occult goods and things. So yeah, you're mainly seeing it through Harlan's point of view. So you're seeing it from somebody who is not inside the world of the Whitehaven Witches, but you find him interacting with people who are connected with the Whitehaven witches so there are small mentions and small views into witches from Whitehaven witches in this book and obviously we were first introduced to Gabe and the seven Nephilim that's such a hard word to say and I don't even know pronouncing it right you see those at, was it at the end of book three or four I think but yes yeah, so we were first introduced to the Nephilim in the original Whitehaven witches series and this is like a spin-off that's the word I was looking for this is a spin-off that uses characters that were brought in after the um, wild hunt in the White Heaven Witches books and it gives them their own story and such and so this is a point where I've already read the books that kind of follow on from this because I think it's kind of like of alternating between the White Heaven Witches and the White Haven Hunters but ultimately I just went up to what was it book 12 and then I've come backwards to read these books uh, but I think it's kind of like you know how Grey's Anatomy and Station 19? The fire station one. Um, <laughs> I need to check. Because I've also got Station 11 in my head and I know that's not right. Yeah, it's Station 19. I think I've got a couple of seasons to catch up on of that. Station 19 and Grey's Anatomy are in the same universe. And you can alternate seasons to be fully caught up because Station 19 and Grey's Anatomy happen at the same time. That's kind of like what is happening with these books. You've got the events of Whitehaven Witches and the events of Whitehaven Hunters happening at the same time. So I have a feeling I'm going to see more references to things I've already read in the Whitehaven Witches series as I continue with the Hunters. 
<sighs> that was a very long winded way of explaining that but yeah I really enjoyed it obviously I said it wasn't what I thought it was going to be I've said in other books that I thought this was going down the paranormal investigators route but it's something completely different and I actually found myself really enjoying it and I found myself reading it really quickly this is at 280 pages at the moment this is one of five in the Whitehaven Hunters and it's typical time to read says so five hours and 23 minutes. I read this over about two days I think when I got home from work so I knowing me I think I probably did it in maybe three three and a half hours just because I'm just I've always been this way I've always been an incredibly quick reader I say do not judge or compare your speeding read to mine. Comprehension and spelling I've always been a little bit off the charts so that's just me. Um, <laughs> It does mean though that I can't draw. I'm not particularly great at maths or science. English and the creative side of things was where my brain was at. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the next ones. But yeah, I'll do the next one at three. And then depending on how many, I'm like, going to do five or six, depending on how many are out at that time and how many books I think there is actually going to be. But yeah, it's really nice seeing Shadow story because she comes in and out of the White Haven which is after she is introduced so it's really nice to actually get to know Shadow a bit more and see about her life as Faye and looking at the possible idea of going home but also seeing her settle in to the real world and seeing the Nephilim come to terms with their history and how things are at present and it's quite interesting because it's one of those things where they're looking upon their history and why they were created and the anger they have at the idea that they were born merely to serve and fight and realizing they don't have to do that and they don't have to work for at this point they are working for themselves and so it's almost like a coming of age type thing because they're finding themselves after all this history and finding themselves as what they are now and dealing with the modern world um <laughs> i feel like at the end of the day i always seem to find some coming of age story like at the heart of a lot of things lately maybe it's at a point where i feel like i'm still coming of age in my mid 30s finding myself as i get older i understand that coming of age thing a bit later in life and so i feel like i just see it more in the books that I read. Am I seeking it out or is it just happen, happen to be a coincidence? I'm not sure. But yes, yeah, so you're seeing all these different characters coming to terms with where they are and where they're living and uh, dealing with what life has served to them on a plate. It really is looking at the anger that the Nephilim have for their creator, in a sense. And I'm really just intrigued as to where that story is going to go. Some of them are just like, oh, well, it was in the past, it's fine. But then there's others that are still fairly angry. I'm intrigued to know whether the Nephilim are going to get closure for what they've been through. And if that's going to affect how they work as hunters going forward. But yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. I think TJ Green has created a wonderful universe. The next one here... So that was Spirit of the Fallen. So the next two, you've got Shadow's Edge and Dark Star. Oh, wait, there is six here. Book four is Hunter's Dawn. Book five is Midnight Fire. And book six is Immortal Dusk. And then I think there was something else by TJ Green on here as well. Storm Moon Shifters. And that starts with Storm Moon Rising. I think that's the only other ones at the moment. Oh, is there more there? Is there more? Oh, there's the Moonfell Witches. I'm just going down a TJ Green rabbit hole right now. So yeah, I need to go through and figure out what I need to get. <laughs> this is what it's like being a book lover. You see, you want to buy. There is a reason why I had to do a purge of my books when I started like sorting out all my stuff in regards to moving. <laughs> so that was Spirit of the Fallen, a White Haven Hunters book one by TJ Green. There you go. Whoever does the artwork for these books... I love you because <laughs> they're brilliant they're beautiful and this comes back to a sword that they find out actually does have paranormal magic associated with it but at first they don't know what it is until they accidentally bring someone back I'll just say that I don't want to spoil too much of the story I like to let people enjoy things and be surprised by things yeah. so Shadow is very much presented as somebody who is do now think later and she realizes that when she does now and thinks later that maybe she should have thought first <laughs> 
yeah, it's going to be fun to properly get to know Shadow and Gabe and the Nephilim through these books because the Whitehaven Witches definitely focus more on the witches and this will give you a chance to look at those characters that we will introduce a little bit later and get their stories and yeah I've never heard of the Nephilim before but it's very much rooted in religion and gods and fallen angels and so I'm really just interested in it like as somebody who was not at all interested in these things at school reading about them and putting it into kind of a creative mindset just makes things a bit more interesting for me if you are reading these books along with me please let me know what you think if you are enjoying them if there's any books you recommend based on the enjoyment of these kind of books just uh, chat to me in the comments thank you to the lovely subscribers who have uh, joined i said in my uh, one of my last videos we've hit the 250 mark which i know doesn't seem like many in regards to um other <laughs> youtubers but for my little corner of the internet this was a big deal so thank you so much um for those who have decided to join my little corner of the internet here but yeah so uh, thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and i will see you next time with another wednesday bookshelf video Mwah. stay safe everybody I love you all. Bye!